What's up guys? Welcome to lab 6 of our STM32 C0 MOOC. So this is a more advanced lab. In this lab we'll use the ADC, the DMA and the timers. The objective of this lab is to learn about the ADC, so the analog to digital converter, with the DMA, so direct memory access, and the timers. So we will convert a signal that is on a pin, so PA12, which is connected or which has an alternate function for ADC1 channel 12. And we will store the converted values inside the buffer, inside the RAM, thanks to the DMA and scheduled by the timer. This is a block diagram of what we want to achieve. So as you can see, so we'll have the signal here, so analog signal that you want to convert, connected to PA12, which is ADC1 channel 12. So connected to the ADC, and we'll have a trigger coming from the timer three every hertz, so every seconds, basically. And this will trigger also the DMA to store the value converted you know, to the buffer inside the RAM. So the ADC1 is going to measure 8-bit data on PA12, so which is ADC1 channel 12, and we'll get a conversion every second, which is triggered by the timer 3, so which will be working as a time base. And its update event is going to trigger the ADC conversions. So the data coming from the ADC1 are transferred by the DMA into a buffer that is in the RAM. So the DMA1 channel 2 is the one that we'll be using in this case. And this is going to be used in a circular mode using bytes for both sides. The first part of the configuration will be the timer. So team 3 in this case. We are going to use team 3 as a time base and we'll use the up counter mode with internal clock, and the prescaler and counter period will be configured to generate a one second overflow event, and will enable also the trigger event selection, TRGO, as an update event. So create a new project. You know how to do that. For the part number, you know what it is by now. So STM32C031C6T6. Select it here and press OK. We're going to give a name to this project. So STM32C0 underscore ADC, for example. Okay, and then click Finish. Now, so in the timer section here, you're going to select timer 3. And you're going to select the clock source to be internal. Now, for the prescaler, so we said 11,999. For the counter period, we'll be using 999. Okay, up counter. And we'll enable you know, the TRGO, so the trigger output. So enable it and select the update event. So we'll use this event you know, to trigger the ADC and also trigger the DMA. Next step is the DMA configuration. So in ADC1, we'll use the DMA mode. So for this, so we'll add the DMA settings. So what we'll do is inside the configuration in the DMA settings, we'll add the DMA1 channel 2. And this is a peripheral to memory configuration we'll use. We'll use a circular mode. And for the memory, we will increment the address. So on the memory side. For data width, we'll use both bytes, you know, for source and destination. Okay. In analog, look for ADC1. And we're going to add, you know, so first, yeah, you will want, you know, the ADC channel 12. So we'll enable this. So this is PA12 right there, ADC1 channel 12. And now we are going to add the DMA support. So in DMA settings tab, add 
select ADC1. So this will select DMA1 channel 1. This is peripheral to memory, so this is a good configuration for us. Uh, we're going to use a circular mode. And for the rest, so the memory will increment. So every time, you know, we'll have a buffer, so we have a new conversion, will uh, increment, you know, the pointer to the buffer. And for the data width, we don't need a half word, we're going to use bytes. Okay, and that's it. We can continue the ADC1 conversion. So we want, you know, to have ADC1 channel 12 that is converted. So we'll have a trigger coming from the timer-free uh, trigger output. We'll use 12.5 cycles for sampling time. So this is, you know, something you can configure. For the resolution, so we're going to go down to 8 bits and we'll do transfer over DMA. So let's do all these configurations here. So go back to the parameter settings for your ADC right here. So we said we don't need, you know, 12 bit resolution. We're going to go down to 8 bits. So you see, you can select, you know, the resolutions. So up to 12 bits. Then we're going to enable the DMA continuous request like this. Okay. Now for the sampling time, we'll increase it, you know, to 12.5. So this is selectable all the way from 1.5 all the way to 160.5 cycles. So we'll select 12.5. For the external trigger, so we're going to select timer 3, trigger output event. And for the edge, we'll use the rising edge. Can now expand a little bit the rank 1. So rank 1, so basically we have only one you know, channel to convert. So there is only one rank and we see our channel 12 here, which is PA12, okay? For the clock configuration of the SM32C0, we'll select 12 megahertz because this will be, so the frequency of your system clock, but also your peripheral clock. And so your timer three clock. So all the calculation we did, all the settings we did uh, previously for the pre-scaler and for the counter period are based on 12 megahertz, you know, clock. So we're going to clock configuration and we'll keep the default 12 megahertz. So 12 megahertz for the system clock and 12 megahertz also for the peripheral and the timers. Now save the project to generate the code. If you are using stm 2 cube ID version 1.10.1 .1 and stm 2 cube C0 library version 1.0.0, there is an issue with the code generation with DMA usage. The init function of the DMA is wrongly located after the peripherals initialization. So ADC in this case. MX underscore DMA underscore init should be manually moved before any other peripheral which is using it. So because I'm using, you know, version 1.10.1 of CubeID, and the version 1.0.0 of the cube library, I will have to do, you know, the manipulation of the code. So change the order of the init functions. In main.c and main function, look for the init functions right there. You see, the problem is that in my case, the init for the DMA is not located at the proper place it should be made before the ADC configuration. So just move it, you know, to the first place, for example, and that will solve the problem. So this issue uh, is going to be fixed, of course, in uh, future versions. So, but if you are using the 1.10.1, you will have to make this change. At this point, we just need to add a few lines of code. So one, you know, line to uh, basically declare the data buffer will be using to store the data, the converted uh, data. And then uh, some peripheral starts. So we'll have one function to start the calibration of the ADC, one function to start the DMA, you know, uh, conversions for the ADC. And then we'll start the timer base, which is used, you know, to transfer the data 
from the ATC to the RAM thanks to the DMA. So let's add the declaration for the buffer that we're going to use. And we're going to add it you know, to the PV section right there. So this is 8 bit and 8 data. Now, in the main function, after the init, and just before the while loop, we're going to add some code. So first, we'll add a line of code to start the calibration of the ADC. Then, we'll add one line of code to start the DMA conversions of the ADC. So we'll give as a parameter the handler, and also the destination, so which is our buffer that we declared, and we'll do a transfer of eight, so because we want you know, to convert eight data inside the buffer. Last, we will start the timer, so timer three, which is going to schedule you know, the DMA transfer and the ADC conversions. So again, all this code you know, to be added, you can find it in the description of the video or in the comment section. You can now build a project. So remember the icon, then enter the debug session. Next step will be to add the buffer to the live expression so that we can monitor it you know, in real time inside the debugger, inside QID. Then run the application and you should see the variables uh, inside the buffer, so the different you know, data that are going to be updated every second thanks to the timer. And so the transfer from the ADC uh, data register, so the conversions of the PA12, to the buffer inside the RAM. So you're going to see that happening. So that's thanks to the ADC, the DMA, and the timer. Build your project. With your board connected, you're going to enter debug mode. Switch to debug session. Now open the live expression window, so located here. Click on it, so live expression. And we're going to add an expression. So we're going to add a value, which is actually our buffer. So enter buffer, and you see now, you see your buffer with the eight different values. So, so far, you know, there is like uh, all zero, initialized to zero. And so, okay, that's fine. So on your board, so PA12 is located right here. So this will be on CN7. So this is the last one, so down and on the right. So right here. So I connected a jumper from so PA12 that I can connect to the ground here first. And then we'll connect it also to VDD that is located right there. So that's the number three on the left. So three down on the left. That's a VDD. So at first, we'll start by a connection to the ground. So you can find a ground right here, for example. Now we can execute the code. So run the code with this icon. And now I'm going to change, you know, uh, the input of PA12. So this is for now connected to the ground. I'm going to connect it to VDD. So going to connect here. And as you can see now in our table right there, in our live expression of the buffer, we see that every second, you know, we have FFF that has been, uh, you know, displayed there. So that's the conversions. This is the maximum conversion of the ADC. So FF, which is because, you know, it's a eight bit conversion data. So FF will be the maximum. And now if I disconnect and connect back to the ground, we now see the new data that are being you know, added you know, to the buffer, internal buffer. So this is because of the timer, so every second, and the DMA that made the transfer from the ADC data register to the RAM. So inside our buffer. Again, so if I connect to VDD, 
you can still, you know, now that the values are being updated to FF instead of 00, zero as before. So our code uh, is running properly as we expected. So perfect. So that was uh, yeah, a very good exercise. And now you can uh, stop the execution and close the project.